on the subject, where is the power of the resurrection? Because we have spent time in the church. We've had a library of messages, international and national. Yet we seem to be no better off than what is happening years, what happened years ago. The church is weak and the church is anemic. We are now the laughing stock. It seems as this our only function is to expose talent so the world can snatch it away. And we are for forever begging for stuff when we are supposed to be the head and not the tail. Looking at the present church age, we are forced to ask certain questions. Some of the questions I listed here. Why have we stopped preaching on the power of the resurrection? That was all the early generations had. That was all. And that was sufficient for them. And they changed the world. What about us? Why is the present church so anemic? I put it to you. There are more sick people in the church than outside. And I know as a fact, fact check me, that there are more crazies in the church than outside. Amen? Amen? Good. Because nothing is wrong with us. It's always the devil's fault. Amen? Why are we the laughing stock of the world? Why are we content to continue as if nothing ever happened till he comes again? Why did you come this morning? Amen? I'm glad to see you, but that means, I, shall, shall I wait another year before I see you again? What if you never see me again? Amen? Is it possible to preach a historical resurrection message that you have not heard before? These are the questions we carry. When Paul told us in Philippians 3, 10 to 11, I quote the ESV, that I may know him, Jesus, and the power of his resurrection, be made to share his suffering, becoming like him in his death. Paul said, one of my desires, one of my goals, this is Paul, after years of ministry, that I may know him and the power, watch the language, of his resurrection. That power we seem to have controlled and phased out. Because why talk about the Jesus that few people believe in anymore? Let us talk about ourselves and our schemes and our plans to make America great again. We not. We cannot. We will not make America great again. A, presidents, a, a few presidents ago, they shot one who said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Well, they answered the first part. They took him out. That's what your country will do for you. And so, we have to face an American cycle of Christianity. Saved people, people who know God, people who should know better, have allowed themselves to be oppressed again. 21st century non-Christian slavery. At least the first time. I remember my, po my, my, four peer, uh, uh, my forefathers telling me, you know, they lined up the whole nation, marched us across northern Africa to a place called Guinea, kept us there. The church came and sprinkled some holy water us to make our souls Christian, and then we were shackled, put in a ship, amen, and brought across. Nobody knows the trouble we've seen. But is that mythology or is that history? 
yet we came to a land of plenty. Are we any better off? From building pyramids, we end up inhabiting projects with an iPhone and a lot of wires all over us. Are we any better off? We all been raised in church. Everybody's grandmother took them to church. Right? But what has happened to us? This is the question facing us today. I go to the book of Judges, the story of Gideon, the Midianite Judges, chapter 6. And tell me if this is not the American story today. I will read pieces of it. I, I trust you know it. Since you all your grandmothers took you to church, I know you know all the Bible. And you definitely know about Gideon. Amen? Amen? The people of Israel, Gideon 6, 1 to 6, did what was evil in the sight of God. A cycle. It begins a cycle. Violating God's word. And the Lord gave them up into the hand of Midian. The Lord gave them up. In other words, they owed God something. They owed him repentance. They owed him obedience. And sin is a debt, D-E-B-T. And unless the debt is paid, the sin note keeps accumulating. For seven years. And the hand of Midian overpowered Israel. And because of Midian, the people of Israel made for themselves, uh, uh, made for themselves the dens. They cut caves in the mountains. They were hiding. Look at what a chosen people have come. And the mountains and caves and in strongholds. Yeah? Yes. Now, some of these strongholds had wall-to-wall -wall marble, I'm sure. And whenever the Israelites planted crops, whenever the Israelites worked overtime and got extra money, the Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the East would come up against them and take it. Getting poorer and poorer, or poorer and poorer. Amen? Wake up in the morning, same thing for breakfast. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Good. <laughs> and they would encamp against them and devour the produce of the land. You ever plant your garden, have your nice house, fully furnished, and somebody else invited in and they took it from you? That's what was happening. Your hands, your labor, as if they got holes in them. The harder you work, the more you work, the more you lose. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, that, that's, too, that's too far, like me, but it's 10 years ago. You could do the overtime. You could work the 16 hours. You could study all night. No. <laughs> uh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide. It is, e is it not easy? It is not easy. You can't focus. You can't concentrate. A whole other cannot now are facing you. And the reality, God says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. And they came and they took everything. You were working for somebody else. Do I have any faithful, patriotic Americans here today? Is this your life story? Amen. Amen. And Israel was brought low, impoverished, oppressed, and depressed because of the oppressors who, they were, who, had, who, who God placed over them. Hebrews 6, and now come back to the church now. Hebrews 6, 47. It is impossible. It is impossible for those who were part of the church to restore again to repentance those who have been once enlightened experience the glory of God and have tasted the heavenly gifts and have shared the Holy Spirit 
and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the ages to come if they fall away from what your grandmother used to tell you and you never wanted to believe if they fall away they are crucifying once again the son of God to their own harm and holding him up to contempt this is why those of us who are forever fooling around with God and his kingdom we into some serious trouble oh yes we are young we think we can live forever but now sooner or later the price will have to be paid and God you see did all of this thing for you Galatians 5 and 1 it was for freedom they sang the song this morning that Christ set us free it was for freedom he did not do these things for you so your mind can be all twisted up and warped there was a series of cycles of apostasy servitude supplication and salvation wrong and wrong and many Christian lives church services denominations a series of cycles going nowhere fast the reason for this re-enslavement of American Christianity will be exposed this morning and how did God answer them when they cried Judges 6 7 to 10 and when the people cried out to the Lord on account of the Midianite God sent a prophet listen to me he is not going to send a businessman to the White House he's not going to sell Wall Street to make your rules Wall Street is, a, is a, only has one thing in mind to make themselves richer get this clear he's not gonna find no hocus pocus obia something it's not government he sent a prophet he sent a prophet to warn them what america needs today is a prophetic voice to tell them stop it change direction you have spent x number of years going down the wrong road and you are suffering for it nobody nothing can help you except the prophetic word of god now i know you listen to tv and uh, radio i know everybody's begging you for money that is not a prophetic word if you want to give them enjoy yourself the prophetic word of god will cause you first to stop dead in your tracks change course modify your behavior and serve the Lord with all your heart with all your strength with all your soul and with all your might then you turn around and love your neighbor as yourself that will make us great again we can only be great again is God is the center of our lives oh I know I know I know we all like to be affiliated to a house of worship affiliation is very loose you see because nobody asks you to take a psychological profile exam when you come through the door if you go for any part any bigger ma major industry in the world you cannot be employed unless you sit down and take your psychological profile exam they want to know what's in your head what you're thinking amen the only place that's not permitted initially is the church so guess what all the rejects all the crazies all the not so crazies all who think they're hearing voices all who heard voices before and who do and who anticipate to hear voices tomorrow come amen, amen. there is an electrical chair that will shock you back to sanity <laughs> amen and that's the only way to get people's attention quick blast from the past of jewels and amps that will rock your world Jesus will do that to you that's the only way that's the only way we have to stop the foolishness we have to stop our attitudes and your behaviors we have to do what is right not according to what I say or what the government say but what God says amen no what did the prophet tell them 
Did he say, thus said the Lord? Did he give an an inauguration speech? Give give them a pep talk and a rally? Did he sell them books and CDs and DVDs and how to make money and how to get fat, how to get thin, how to lift your eyebrow and twist your nose? Did he, it was any other soul in the conference. The prophet said in verse 20, but you have not obeyed my voice. He's speaking on behalf of God. America, you have rejected the voice of God and now we have sown to the whirlwind and we are reaping what we have sown. Now, yes, I have a witness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. These are the conditions <coughs> that trap us. And in my former days, I read a book by Dr. Francis Crest Wrestling called The Isis Papers. Another one recently printed, recently by Dr. Joy DeGru. She is more contemporary, a psychiatrist, and, and she says, uh, she wrote a, a book called the, the Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome. Very interesting. But I think the granddaddy is Professor John Henry Clark, who wrote a book entitled Christopher, Com- Christopher Columbus and the African Holocaust. And he gave some points which are very important to recognizing how we are. Because when you are conquered, understand something, your conqueror not only colonizes your head, he colonizes information about your history. So you cannot break free. And one of the things he says in this book is that we we have been subject to myths the enemy has been spinning myths to us. He don't come and say, I say, ah, don't believe God. What did he tell Eve? Had God said, implying God lied. And these are the myths he spins to us. One, the myth of a people waiting in darkness for another people to bring them out. You really think the government is interested in bringing you out? Huh? The myth of a people without a legitimate God. This is why everybody now has their own God. Including the invisible God. This is, this is why we have become a nation of accommodation. Everybody's God is there. We say, oh, we are free to choose our gods. Listen to me. That freedom is slavery. The myth of a primitive and the aborigine. I remember many years, uh, I read many years ago, uh, the, the, the British explorers were in Africa and, and they found a little short guy a brother. And they said, what's your name? He said, me, Bantu. They rode back. Thank God they didn't write to CNN. But they said, we have discovered the Bantus. Little did they realize the man was telling them, me, Bantu. In the dead language, it, mean, it meant, I am a man. That came from John Henry Clark too. Amen? What did God told you? And you totally misinterpret it. And you invent your own religion. Hmm? This is it. And the fourth point, the myth of the invader and conqueror as your civilizer. You know, I remember the elders of my clan telling me once, you know how surprised we, we were, young man? We woke up one morning and went to the beach. Ah, uh-huh. we saw three ships. We discovered them on our land. All of a sudden, history has changed. And the, all of history records, they discovered us. Oh, really? We discovered that invaders from a demonic realm had brought sin, sickness, death and disease and they were driven by a lust for gold now how we adopted those habits i will never know and what has the enemy done to us put us in church talk to us in church and convince us that god is dead you are god or by yourself you can do it You have the power. 
you have the beauty you have the height you have the shape to do whatever you want and we say thank you you just heard a voice from heaven is the voice of many waters lying devil you better wake up and take your medication these are the things that are affecting us this is why we have ended up in the present state of affairs because now resurrection means nothing to us many people are, will be upset today because they could not go to or attend the parade many people will not have come to church because they did not get a new dress in time and many people didn't sleep last night because they were out shopping but thank god they sold out your size before you came amen amen <laughs> no i'm talking size six eight ten sold out first all the 14 16 and 18 you had to wrap it around play sheet thank you jesus <laughs> thank you jesus this is what we're going just this is church how could this be church when there are people sick and dying outside there we are carrying the power to help them silver and gold we don't have but such as we have give eye unto thee in the name of jesus christ rise up and walk then look how god intervenes he walks up to get in fact he was waiting on the tree for gideon did god ever have to wait on the tree for you and gideon appears gideon 6 11 to 12 you know what he says hail mighty man of valor and this was a man who was hiding under a grove shredding uh, threshing wheat and just digging out a living out of nothing fear insecurity riding gideon and god walked up to gideon you and said hail mighty man of valor this is strange talk god saw in gideon something he was going to make him not who he was and god began to work on him yet that wasn't enough all men and women of god have excuses i don't care what they testify i don't care how they when they talk the world shake uh -uh. when they met god the first time and he told them they were full of excuses moses did it jeremiah did it isaiah did it and ezekiel did it and the granddaddy was Gideon. Gideon says in, in uh, Judges 6 15, Behold, my clan is the weakest. In other words, I, I man cannot handle sword. Amen. Forget fight, blood. Oh, no, 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 no. I cannot, I'm the weakest. And my clan is the smallest. So, how you expect me to launch an army with my clan when we are the smallest? They'll run us over. What kind of God are you? Amen. Did that bother God? God already had his plan set because God don't make a mistake. Our sea sprawl, I told the church a few weeks ago, has asked in a book two questions. If you were to die tonight with your stomach full of your Easter meal, so now you will have a, an enigma. If you were to die tonight, where are you going you must go somewhere amen amen good question one answer this before you leave amen in fact if in fact lord greece answer it before tonight second question if tonight you were to die and you appear before god and he asks you this question why should i let you into my heaven what would you say amen amen in spite of that apparently gideon didn't answer the question so he decided because of his insecurity another sign of a trapped mind he decided to fleece God and you know put all the fleece one day on the floor and nothing on the fleece next day something on the fleece nothing on the floor 
And finally, God said, look here, stop this foolishness. Go down to the tent. Hear what they're saying. While you arguing with me and trying to fleece me, I have already put the fear of the Lord in them. Listen to what they're saying. And the heathen, the invaders, the conquerors had to testify to Gideon that we are going to die. Gideon is going to kill us. And then Gideon set the plans for battle. The final test was this. He took them down. He took them down. And he asked God, I have 32,000 with me. God said too much. What? You crazy God? Look at this army. I, I barely mustered 32,000. God said too much. Here's what you do. Bring them down to the water. Let me see who is really in hungry in America for the word of God. And how they handle the water, I will tell you who to pick. God reduced Gideon's army from 32,000 to 300. What's the percentage of that? 300 divided by 32,000 multiply 100. 0.96%. Wronged it off 10%. God was looking for a tithe. 10%. He weaned the army down. And now, Gideon took 300 men, divided them in groups of 100, and laid the battle open. Will you go to war with a leader who is not carrying a sword? This is the question you face. Another point. The enemy will use this to run the rest away. The man has no sword. He divides us up in groups of a hundred. Gives everyone an earthen vessel, a vase, with a lamp, a torch inside of it. And say, get ready. Battle time. Will you go to war? An army that's already outnumbering you? a vase and most likely I hope it wasn't made in China right and a torch what kind of battle is this and God said wait when I give the signal crack the vase and stand forth exactly happened at the appropriate signal the earthen vessel we have this treasure resurrection life resurrection power dunamis power dynamic life inside of us we crack this vase release the power and when the enemy saw the power of god the glory of god they thought they were outnumbered and they took it out among themselves they vanquished themselves and god got the victory brothers and sisters god is waiting for us God is waiting for us to do what is right. You see this resurrection? If it never happened, they would laugh at us and say we concocted a story. But since the resurrection, resurrection happened, and many in different parts of the nation saw it, they could hide the fact that the grave is empty. Up from the grave he arose. He came out, therefore we could come out. And that day at Calvary, when we identified with his death burial, he identified with us, he accepted us into the fold. And now on Resurrection Sunday, we too can come out. In fact, we came out with him. This is why the grave is empty. I don't know about you. All along, the final enemy, the enemy launches us off his death. When nothing else seems to work against us, the enemy will tell you, I'm going to kill you. That's the best news you can hear. That's the best news you can hear. He cannot do that. Listen to me. We were afraid of death, and the enemy used death. There was a sting of death. But when Jesus hung on the cross, Galatians 3 and 13, the writer says, Cursed 
is anyone who hangs on a cross. He took the curse. He took the sting of death. So when our time comes, uh, 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 1 Thessalonians uh, 4, when we ask, what about the dead? Don't worry about the dead. God knows where they are. The dead in Christ will rise first. And we, 1 Corinthians 15, who are alive and remain in the twinkling of an eye. One minute we hear on planet earth. Next minute we somewhere with him. In the twinkling of an eye we shall be changed. In the process of the twinkling, the mortal shall put on immortality. The perishable shall put on imperishableness. And the corrupt will put on incorruptibility. Then we are ready for that meeting in the sky. I look for that day. I look forward for that day when our God shall reign forever. We cannot be trapped anymore. I implore you this morning, make it right with God. Settle your history. Settle your history. Settle your issues. Don't let anything hold you back. Only one thing matters now. America will have to meet its maker. You make sure when your times come, it is well with your soul. I identified with his death and burial. I identified this morning with his resurrection. For I know I was resurrected with him. Finally, we can say, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. And we can welcome our Lord this morning. My Savior, my God, and my Lord. You are welcome here. God bless you this morning.